well, did I pick a day to come down? <laughs> I um, don't have the truck at the moment, it's in for some uh, work, so I had to park right at the edge of the woodland and walk everything in. And I decided to do a camp with a load of kit, I don't know why. It's also pretty flooded down here, walking through all that mud and water on the way in was quite challenging, but um, I'm here now. <laughs> As you can see, got all my gear here, I'm going to get set up in this location, just because it's not as far as other locations to walk to and um, yeah get going. This is actually the first video I've recorded since my last camp. Um, last week's video was uh, already in the bank. Um, as you know I broke the camera on that last one so it's been being repaired and it's done nothing but rain since then so that's why it's so muddy out here. But this is all my kit. I've got a cot bed, I've got a new sleeping bag to try out at the back there, it's uncompressed and a new tent as well. Uh, plus a stove and all the normal gear. As you can probably see, it's pretty grey out here today. It was meant to snow, but uh, I think it's more likely to rain, to be honest. <laughs> so, just putting the poles together for this tent. There's a few of them. Um, this tent... I mean, it looks from pictures very similar to my Anor tent, the Gami 6. But I think this one's a bit of an in-between size, like the Gami 4 and 6. Um, but obviously, this is a Pomoli, so we'll try it. Obviously, cheaper, <laughs> but is it as good? I'll have to do a comparison at some point. I've never seen the setup process of this tent before, but I'm assuming it's similar to the Gammy. Um, some pretty chunky pegs, to be honest. Aluminium, should be good. Well, it's kind of guesswork here with these poles, so we'll see what happens. Right, that's roughly pegged out and one, two, three poles in, so we'll see how that goes when I put them in. That in. There we go. Okay, that's up, but I'd say don't peg it out first. Um, unlike with the Nord tent, um, it needs that kind of flex to go up. First one was a little bit of a struggle, but um, now for the ones that go around. One thing I've noticed that these D-rings on the strap are pretty handy while putting it up. If I get rid of that mud, <laughs> they're uh, good to, to pull while you put it in to the appropriate hole. I think these ones probably go on the inside holes, um, it's my guess. Well, first impressions are 
It's not quite got that finesse of the North tent, but you have to bear in mind the price difference between them. And everything seems to be doing its job and, you know, nothing's under too much strain or anything. Um, just need to look at the rest of it, really. And this looks like a vent, yep, with the Velcro. So this one should be one on the other side, I'm guessing. Here we go. And one more. Okay, here's our zips. And we've got a mesh on the inside there. Right, well there's three doors on this, the alternating panels with the, um, the uh, vents. And you can stand up but hunched over in here. So like I said, not as big as the Gammy 6, but uh, a bit bigger than the Gammy 4 I believe. A bit of mud. <laughs> but uh, it's pretty spacious. Let's roll these back and um, I've got the inner and the ground sheet. I think I'm just going to use the ground sheet. Because it's not summer, I'm not worried about bugs or anything. This is quite interesting on the tie tie outs for the uh, door. Put it through if I can, and then you can actually tighten them. I don't think I've seen that on a tent door before. Right, this should be the ground sheet, I hope. <laughs> yeah, that looks about right. And we've got an area of uh, fire resistant material which is going to go here because that's where the stove gap is. And this should just clip on to the edges. And then all these points can be tightened up with the straps. I'm using the uh, Traveller stove, I think it's called, which is the non-collapsible one. I really like it for walks up to like a mile or so, because it's still light, but uh, you don't have to put it together. Just have to put this piece on. And then I can put the chimney on. I've not got a roll out one with me today. I've got one of the uh, fixed ones. I'm adding one more section, that's a little low for my liking. There we go, that's better. I folded the ground sheet under so it's only for half the tent. Um, I kind of didn't realise because I'm using the cot bed, I've actually torn the bottom of the tent before using that so I thought best not to this time.
I'm going to use my little flex tail gear pump to do this. This is the new sleeping bag I was talking about, sent to me to try out. I believe it's going to be on a Kickstarter soon. It's by Big Lou, Big Lou, something like that, like Big Igloo, I guess. But it's made with Aerogel, which is apparently um, some kind of insulation that NASA have used on the Mars rover and stuff like that. Um, so it's not down or anything like that, but it goes down to something ridiculous, I think like minus 40 or something like that. So I thought I'd give it a go. I've got this and I've got a a blanket as well, a quilt by them. Um, this feels different though, this is like a soft PVC coating or something it feels like. Um, very strange. I did just get some uh, moisture on it so we'll see how it copes with that. Um, my only concern feeling it and looking at it is um, kind of condensation. Oh it's even got a uh, like a thermometer in it. <laughs> and my Van Gogh Gwent pillow, which is for when I'm not hiking too far. Nice comfy one, almost like a full size pillow. Quick sit down before I get on with processing some wood. I need some for a campfire and for the stove later on as well. Um, yeah, and I'll uh, show you a bit more of the tent inside as well. Looks like the vents on the inside open up. So you can close them off, open them up, depending on if you want that airflow is obviously good with the stove. Close it for the moment. And you've got another one of them tie-outs. I like these tie-outs. Up on top you've got a bit of a gear hammock as well so you can easily dry stuff out which is quite handy. One thing I'm not too sure about is why this only comes out to here and not the whole section because most stoves have chimney at the back whereas you've got all this space. So yeah that would be better but um it's better than nothing, obviously. Much better. That's a simple fire pit made and it should be the right size for my grill. Nice big piece of robinia that I've got left down here, that should do.
So it's starting to rain here, but uh, I can always cook on the stove if I absolutely need to. But it's uh, not been hard yet, just keeps trying. Just had a bit of a downpour but I think it's over now. I had to zip up the tent because the edges of the bed were getting wet. It needs to be more in the middle really but I need to be getting in and out for now. <laughs> I'll move it in a bit. I've got some smaller stuff for the stove here. I think it's birch. It's been mouldy at one point, or wet at one point, but uh, it seems pretty dry now. I've got this new knife from uh, BPS Knives, Ukrainian company, and it's got a ferro rod with it, so may as well take this opportunity to break it in. Get that coating off of this. And I've got some Tinder card here, which I'm just gonna fluff up. some sparks. It's already caught this bit. <laughs> Fire's going well, that nice dry wood. It's good to be back out. <laughs> I hate it when I'm stuck in. That was a week and a half or something like that. I mean, I've been out, but obviously not for the night, not filming and stuff. But yeah, actually a little bit of a sunset in the top of the trees. A little bit of blue sky, just before it sets. <laughs> nice to have this uh, fire going though. A little bit of warmth, it is cold today, coldest day in a while since that snow. I think it's going to be minus three tonight. Last I looked it did say there could be some snow, but we'll see. If there is, there is. If there isn't, there isn't. Got some um, honey mustard chicken to cook tonight, which I'm rather looking forward to because I'm quite hungry. Kind of missed lunch today. But uh, also looking forward to getting in the tent later, getting that all warm and snug. I will get a bit of condensation because I've lifted back the um, the ground sheet so all that moisture is going to kind of evaporate and hit the tent but uh, we'll see what it's like. It's got some venting. A 
couple of nice pieces of oak that were over by the Adirondack shelter. Just had to wander over and bought them. Well, it's lightly hailing. It did come down a little heavier, but it is hailing. <laughs> That's a start. Bring on the snow. <laughs> Fire's still going well though. Time to build this fire up with all this howl coming down. Although I think it stopped right this minute. <laughs> well, you may be able to hear the wind's got up and it's hailing. It's just calmed down now. It's kind of coming in waves. So I thought I'd come in the tent, watch the fire and drink some neck oil. <laughs> when in doubt, grab a beer. Oh. oh, here we go. It's not too bad because it's hail, it's not, you know, soaking you through. And the fire I've built right up, so that should be okay for a minute. Maybe it'll pass, maybe it won't. If it gets harder, I'll just light the stove and cook on that. Chilling down though. Got quite a lot of coals here, so it's time to spread them. Grill on. A pan with a bit of oil in it. Okay, I've got some chicken fires. Pan's not hot yet. Time to get these flipped, nice and crispy on top. It started snowing halfway through my cook here, but uh, let's crack on. I've got some mustard. Whole grain, and some honey, Get some white vinegar. And this is some chicken stock paste. And a pack of water. Sauce is really starting to thicken now. Well, here we go. This looks bloody lovely. <laughs> I had a quick taste of the sauce out there and it was very rich, very nice. Come on chicken, come on chicken. Oh, it's hot and sticky. Mm. 
That is good. I've come in here, it's snowing out there. <laughs> it was sleeting and then it turned to snow. So I thought I'd come in here. Fire's nearly out anyway. I've got some wraps to go with this as well. Yeah, number two. <laughs> that was absolutely delicious. I'm really glad I did that today. Absolutely loved it and the wraps helped as well. Just the right amount of food. Oh dear. But yeah, I think it stopped snowing. I'll have to go out and have a check in a minute, do my washing up and whatnot. Um, I did want to update you guys. Uh, if you saw before Christmas, I released the first batch of my limited edition uh, leather patches. Um, logo patches, kind of like the other ones, but leather, really deluxe and nice. Um, I'm ready now, after a busy end of year, to um, release the second batch. So they're available as from this video going live. So get to kentsurvival.com to order one of them. Comes with the sticker as well, just like the normal patch does. And thank you guys to the people that already did order them. Thank you very much. Seeing as I'm in here now, I may as well get this stove going. Just a couple of fire lighters in there. super cozy in here. <laughs> I love this stove both because I don't have to put it together and because it's got a fire grate in there as well. But yeah it is beautiful in here. Well, it's been about an hour so I think we've probably got enough heat. A nice cup of tea. That's me in the new sleeping bag. Give this a good old try. I think it might be a bit hot if the what they say is true. I've just been sat here looking at the stove really. It's gotten quite late after a couple of cups of tea. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the morning. Had to break down a few bits of wood just to get this fire going properly. The bigger bits weren't taken from the fire lighters. Oh, just popped outside and it's all frosty around the bottom of the tent or 
it's frozen what was on there from the rain and that. Well, the stove's going well now, it's starting to warm up. I'll take this jacket off in a minute and hat. <laughs> um, I only actually slept in my long john bottoms and my t-shirt last night. This sleeping bag, yeah, it works really well. Um, and there was no moisture in it, no condensation that I could tell. And for a mummy bag, it was quite roomy as well. Pretty impressed. <laughs> um, yeah, don't know what it does. Uh, Minus 40, but at minus, I don't know, it said minus 3 nearest town, so minus 4, minus 5 here, I guess. Um, yeah, it was good. Very nice. Um, yeah, I'm going to warm through and uh, probably do some breakfast. <laughs> okay, pans on and a little oil. And while that warms up, I'm just going to process some of this, going to avocado, got a shallot instead of an onion and some lime here, some other bits and bobs. You can probably guess, huevos rancheros. A bit tricky to do with one pan, but we'll manage. With that I've got some black beans. While that cooks I'm just going to prep these. I'm just going to slice my lime ready. Get that out of the way. unusual. No, oh, no. Skin of the stone still there. <laughs> oh. Some spice. Now I'm just going to grate some cheese over this as we're nearly done. Alright, just going to take that off. And hopefully they won't stick, but warm up my tortillas. Oh, it's hot. Right, here we go. Two tortillas, lightly toasted. We've got our salsa. Our black beans. Two eggs, a little bit of cheese there. Nice squeeze of lime. Already squeezed it on the avocado so it didn't brown. And some beans. <laughs> and I suppose we should go for this. I do love black beans. Well, that's a big mouthful. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good breakfast. It is a lovely temperature in here at the moment. Just the fire's gone out, but the coals are in there. Mm. Do love some huevos rancheros and variations of it. It's a very brisk morning. <laughs> the uh, floor is crunchy with the frozen leaves, the frost. Oh dear, but uh, I slept well. I've, I've got the energy from that breakfast as well. It was lovely. But yeah, I, I slept through the night basically. All right, let's make a start on this. Right, that is me all packed away. Got a couple of trips up to the car, unfortunately, but uh, I'll put the camera away for that. And I'll leave you here. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, them patches available now at kensurvival.com. And I'll see you all next week. Goodbye for now.